Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Almighty God for giving us an opportunity to meet again on this program of Sec Ambassadors. And we appreciate him for his faithfulness, um, even particularly in the topic we've been considering for the last um, two weeks now. We give him praise for keeping us thus far. May his name be praised forever in Jesus' name. Uh, today we want to have the concluding part of the message we've had from the last two weeks. And that's talking about understanding the unadaptable love of God. And so today we want to look at the last um, part of that uh, of that particular sermon. And so today our focus will be on the lessons from Christ's sufferings. The lessons from Christ's sufferings. And our text will be from the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, Matthew 20, verse 16 to 20, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25. Romans 5, verse 1 to 11. Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25. Let us pray. Spirit of living God, we appreciate you because indeed you are the Almighty. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives and for all that we have continued to do. Thank you for fighting our battles. Thank you for being God on our side. Thank you because indeed you are God. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for always being there. We appreciate you. We pray, God, even as we go to your message today, we pray be grace for us to understand uh, all that you know you pass through, the lessons that we need to uh, understand. We pray you give us all that grace to understand in Jesus' name. Give us your understanding, and at the end, let your name be glorified. Thank you, Almighty God, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. So, just like I mentioned to us earlier, uh, we are having the last part of. Uh, the message of understanding the, the understandable love of God, and for today, for today, our focus will be on the lessons and that you and I can learn um, from Christ's suffering. Uh, it is better for us to know that, um, like you all know, that God loves us so much, uh, but then sometimes when um, someone and loves another fellow, um, most of the time we want to uh, probably assess uh, the, the the level of that love. That sometimes in marriage, you know, the, the wife will want the husband to, to, to show her that he actually love, he love her. And, but then coming to the love that God has for us as, as woman, you now we can see the, the true picture of his love, the love and the depth of his love in what he did um, by giving us our Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, that's what he says in John 3 verse 16, the popular verse of the scripture, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that means that uh, God was able to show us that he truly loved us by the sacrifice of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that he released um, for us. Brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that God loved us so much, and that is why he was able to give his only begotten son, so that you and I uh, will not perish, but for us who have um, an everlasting life. And I pray that uh, his death on the cross will not be able in our lives in Jesus' name. I will say that it's also important for us to you know, consider two important questions. And the first question I would like us to just ponder on it is that what then is our response to the love that God has shown to us? We have said that God loved us so much that He gave His Son Jesus Christ to die for us. Uh, even when the Bible says, even in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8, it said, While we are yes, and said, Christ died for us. So the first question I want us to ponder on today is that what is the response of you and I? To the love that God has shown to us. And the second question I would like us to also ponder on before we go on is the fact that what then the, 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 uh, our response does it involve any form of, of sacrifice? Because, you know, we say in that John 2 says that he gave, God had to sacrifice his son for you and I to, this, to be saved. So the second question I would like us to just ponder on is the fact that. That particular response we are given to the first question does it involve any element of sacrifice? It means that are we in any way indebted to the level that we are ready to also make sacrifices uh, for the Lord? And I pray that God will give us the grace to be able to sacrifice for Him in Jesus' name. I would like to just um, probably explain this further by just uh, retracing uh, what we have. In, you know, I'm a, I'm a scientist. What we have. Uh, as the in physics in particular the Newton's third law of motion and the Newton's third law of motion says that uh, for every action in nature there is an equal and opposite reaction that means that each time we have an action 
we expect to have a reaction. That is what we as scientists believe in. So that means that if you can liken this to what God has done, so that means that for all that God has done for us in nature, you and I should also be able to respond appropriately. And I pray that God will give us the grace to respond well in Jesus' name. It's also important for us to do that, you know, like we have established in our last two less, uh, 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 messages, that Christ died, he suffered. Last week, we looked at all that he suffered. Look at 12 things that there to suffer for you and I to be saved. And you know, all of these things, you know, are daily scriptures for us to understand and the love that God has, God has towards us. And then, of course, for us to, to, for us to also be able to learn one or two things from all that uh, Christ went through. So today, by the grace of God, we want to look at and those things we can learn from all that God suffered, all that the Lord Jesus Christ suffered prior to his crucifixion on the cross and eventually when he died on the cross. And I trust God that will give us understanding today in Jesus' name. Now, aside from the lessons um, that we want to focus on today, at the same time, it's better for us also to know that we also have some benefits that you and I you know, have. Ultimately, we know that, of course, Christ died on the cross, Christ's death on the cross gave us salvation. As, but aside from this, there's also some other things you and I need to also know that we have as benefits from Christ's sufferings prior to his crucifixion of the cross and eventually when he died on the cross. And I pray that today the Lord himself will get to understand it in the name of Jesus. It's also important for us to also note that Christ's suffering on the cross can be summed up, interestingly, can be summed up, summed up in the fruit of the spirit of the fruit of the spirit, as we have in Galatians chapter 5. Verse 20 to 25. So it means here that if you look at uh, the fruit of the spirit very well, you know, in a way, we'll be able to just give us a summary of the lessons that we can derive from Christ's suffering prior to his vision of the cross and eventually when he was, you know, hung on that particular, hung on, 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 on that particular cross. At the same time, it was important for us to know that um, all this fruit of the spirit that we have said that in the way captured uh, the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ, we, they are also required. For us to be able to fulfill the great commission, it's better for us to know that you know when God was to listen to His Son to come and die for you and I, He has and He had He had the goal. His goal was to save us all, and of course that also means that when uh, we as a when we call ourselves Christians, that means that we also have the responsibility to let others know what God has done in His and His Son, and for them to also uh, be company. So that is just a summary of what we have. Uh, in the great commission, just for us to be able to extend uh, God's love to others so that they too can be saved and enjoy the salvation gift that our Lord Jesus Christ has presented to us on the cross of Calvary. And so I'll just uh, pick like a verse uh, from that book of Galatians, that's chapter 5 and 25. It says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Like I said, all that Jesus Christ passed through can be summed up in the fruit of the Spirit. And that is what we have in this verse 25. He says that if we live in the Spirit, meaning that when Jesus was on earth, he lived in the Spirit. And of course, because he lived in the Spirit, he was also able to walk in the Spirit. And that was why he could, you know, endure all that he endured and to be able to then uh, fulfill all that God has sent to the world and uh, to do on the cross. So similarly, that means that for you and I, we, if we say that we are Christians and we live in the Spirit, it's also important for us to be able to walk in the spirit and i pray that god will give us the grace to be able to walk in the spirit in a way that be acceptable unto him in jesus name amen so let's quickly look at uh, the lessons and benefit uh, from christ's sufferings and the way we're going to do this is that last week we considered the 12 uh 12 areas or 13 things that the lord jesus christ suffered and um, before he then died and so today we'll just look at the lessons from those 12 and how we can just link and those things that he suffered to the fruit of the Spirit that you and I need for us to be able to fulfill the Great Commission. So let's look at the first one. And the first one is the fact that he was wrongly accused. You know, Jesus was wrongly accused. We learned that last week. And from there, we'll be able to understand that never the fact that he was wrongly accused, he was not part of in any way. Instead, we want to believe that he had the joy of God in his heart, that he was doing his Father's will. And the lessons we can and that is um, the, the the lesson we can learn from there. He had the joy of the Lord. So brothers and sisters, no matter what you are going through, even if you have been falsely accused, 
be it anywhere, even if it was in the church of God, remember that you just have to, you know, remember that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that is the, the benefit that we have is that, you know, that, the, that, that, that suffering of Christ, you know, help us to understand that we can have that joy of God. And of course, when we have the joy of God in us, then we have the strength to overcome every trial of faith that comes our way. The second thing that we can also, um, the second suffering that we said last week was the fact that he suffered rejection. And like you said last week, none of us wants to experience rejection, but Jesus has to suffer rejection. And this, in a way, portrayed the fact that he was just a gentle person. He, he portrayed that gift of gen, that fruit of gentleness. So he was gentle to the point that he could actually be rejected. And of course, what has this done for us? He gave us the platform to be accepted by God. To give us the platform to be accepted by God. And we can see that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6. And the third thing and that he suffered that we captured last week was the fact that he was flogged. You know, he was beaten because of us. And if you can see, if you relate that to um, the fruit of the Spirit that you and I uh, would definitely uh, need, and that's talking about lost suffering. He was able to persevere, he was able to you know, endure, he was able to show patience at uh, the fact that things were not going you know, the way every one of us would have loved. But then what did we gain from this? What we gained was the fact that we had our healing. And we can see that captured in the book of Isaiah 53 verse 5. And we say that by his stripes we, were, we are healed. Meaning that because of the suffering that Jesus had, you and I we were able to have our healing. And of course that also came about the fact that he was able to be patient, he was also able to demonstrate love suffering. And I pray that the good Lord will give us the grace to be patient and also to be able to have this fruit of love suffering in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So the fourth thing that you and I also need to remember as part of what he suffered was the fact that his clothes were taken off. Now he took off his clothes. And of course, like I said last week, none of us want to experience that. But you know, we say that you know, when somebody his clothes is an adult clothes is taken off, the person will be embarrassed. And but then you see that even when all of this was done to him, Jesus kept his peace. Uh, he, he, he had that peace, he had that peace. And just like I said, he knew that he was really the Father's will. And then they had that peace that God was with him. And of course, that also makes us understand that, you know, because of us, he was, he was made poor. He was made poor because he, his clothes were taken off as if uh, he, was, he was a poor man. But then what do we have is that we are able to have his riches in abundance. And that is God's promise to us. You know, so for, he was made poor and because of us. He was made poor so that you and I, can be rich. And I pray that that will be a testimony forever in Jesus' name. And the next thing we, are, uh, we also need to go over that he suffered was the fact that a crown of thorns was put on his head. So that means that, you know, they look at him and because, you know, they, they said that he, may, he, he said he's the king of Idris. So they made the crown of thorns and they put this on his head. But then we saw here, we can see here that even when this was done to him, our Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated the fruit of faithfulness. He was faithful, you know, he, he did not query the uh, Heavenly Father, he did not pray the Almighty God, he did not speak anything then he did what against him. He stayed faithful to that assignment. And what does that uh, present or that gives us the grace for you and I to be able to overcome trials. He gave us grace for trials, grace for us to be able to stand and defer that of the enemy. And I pray that the good Lord will continue to strengthen us to overcome every every attack that the enemy might be away in Jesus' name. And then again, the, if you go on the game, see that from all around last week, so that he was mugged and taunted. So in a way, when he was mugged, in, instead of him retaliating, what did he do? He showed kindness again. He showed kindness. And that's why you and I today, we can then enjoy the peace with God. You know, just because of what Jesus did, you know, for some people, when they are mugged, you know, they could just say, oh, I'm not doing any longer. And then that will be the end of the salvation plan. But Jesus, rather than him retaliating, he says, show kindness to continue to, to still go ahead to lay down his life so that you and I can have peace with God. And that thing that they did to him was the fact that they spat on him. You know, they spat on him. You know, he could have just retaliated by just, you know, doing the same thing back to them. But then he, he showed the fruit of self-control was able to control himself and of course that 
uh, that action, that ability to self-control himself, that fruit of self-control, you know, was able to win for us the consolation so that you and I can be reconciled back to our Heavenly Father. And then again, the, the, from what we had last week, number eight says that it was repeatedly eat, uh, they eat him repeatedly, repeatedly on his head with his stick. That means that it was repeatedly eat on the head with his stick. You know, same, you know, just like we mentioned earlier, he was able to show love for free. He did not retaliate. He did not do anything. But then, this sacrifice of him, the fruit of the spirit of the spirit that he demonstrated there, was able to, you know, grant us deliverance from God's wrath, as you can see in the book of First Thessalonians, chapter five, and verse nine. And then again, it was so important for us to know that they also offered him so wine to drink. They offered him so wine to drink. Rather than him, you know, just uh, showing who he actually is, being the son of the most high, being, being the Lord Jesus, he, he was he showed peace. He did not do anything. He allowed the process to continue. He allowed them to do all that they wanted to do. And eventually what happened, you and I, you know, we're able to have the benefit of us today where we then have his blood return. Although he was offered so wine, what we to drink today, what he has given us, he has given us his blood. And that today we can talk about the only communion because Jesus gave us his body. At the same time, he also gave us his blood. And we can see that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. And then again, he was, if you go on to what we saw last week, we will also see that he was crucified with criminals. You know, he showed his goodness. You know, someone that was holy, someone that was without sin, who was still crucified with criminals. He showed that goodness, that, that kind heart that he had towards us. You know, not, not judging us. He, he, he stayed with them. He allowed himself to die with the sinners. He, he showed that fruit of goodness. And so what we have from there, we then have mercy. And that's why today you and I can be called children of God. Just because Jesus was able to endure all of these things and to even die on the cross uh, with criminals. And finally, uh, okay, before then, we also know that it was misunderstood. Um, even when he said, Eli, Eli, Labat, Sakoni, you know, was talking to his family, he was misunderstood. And then they, they took an action and because he was misunderstood. Jesus was gentle. He showed that fruit of the Spirit. He was gentle. He, did not, he, was, he didn't try to explain to, to them what he was saying. He didn't try to argue with them. He was just gentle. He accepted whatever they were, uh, what, what, they, what they thought at that particular time. But then that also showed the wisdom of God. That you and I have to enjoy. And the wisdom of God that we have to enjoy today is our Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And we can see that in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 24. And so the last thing we mentioned last week that he suffered was the fact that eventually he died. He died on the cross for you and I. He died for our sake. And of course, what does that show? That showed the love. You know, we said that God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. At the same time, Jesus also showed the love by submitting himself to, to pass through all of these sufferings and for all your life to be saved. He showed his love by, by choosing to pay that price for our salvation. He showed um, the love by, 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 by volunteering himself to, to pass through all these sufferings so that you and I today can be reconciled back to God. And I pray, and of course, what does that bring to us? That gives us eternal life. That gives us the opportunity to be able to enjoy eternal life with the Almighty God. And we can say that, and my prayer that we will not lose our eternal eternity in Jesus. We will not lose eternity with God in the name of Jesus. And we can see that in the book of John chapter 10, verse 28 to 30. And so, um, having said all of this, we are trying to consider uh, the, the, the lessons and the, the lessons that you and I uh, can, 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 can get from all of this that Jesus Christ went through. The lessons that you and I can you know, can learn from what Jesus went through. At the same time, we have also considered the benefits and that also come from this suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so then, after, you know, with this understanding, it's then also important for us to then come to this point where you and I can also ask ourselves this question. And that is the fact that after all that God has done, just like I asked us earlier, what will you do for him? What will you give him in return? What will you do? Based on all that we have said so far, all that God has done, all that Jesus Christ did on the cross, 
what will you and I do in return? And one answer that you can give us, that I can, I can give us to just like I gave us one last week, is that you and I should be ready to express our gratitude to Him by winning souls um, to His kingdom, to the Lord's kingdom. And I pray that as we choose to do this, the Lord Himself will bless us and strengthen us in Jesus' name. I think conclusion is also important for us to also learn that God wants us to live a spirit-controlled life. And just like you know, like he said that he passed all of these things and yet he did not commit any sin. He was able to do because he was he was he, he had the spirit of God working with him. He's God himself. And that means that for us to be able to triumph over every child that I will come our way, we need to be able to live a spirit controlled life, and which is what will definitely help us to be able to fulfill uh, the great commission. So, in, this, in, in in summary, what we are saying is the fact that the best thing that you and I can do to respond to this love of God, to respond out to show our appreciation to what our Lord Jesus Christ did, is for us to live a spirit controlled life so that we can fulfill the great commission. So, this will help us uh, to be able to honor the sacrifice that Jesus made and to also to appreciate the Almighty God for that greatest gift of salvation that we have, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's important for us to also remember this part of the Great Commission. Like we have said that all that God did is for us to know that He loves us, but then it's also good for us to be able to express our love in return, and which is uh, which we can do by fulfilling the Great Commission. And so we have that capture for us, and I'll quickly read that from the book of Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. I'll read it from Amplified Version. It says, Jesus came up and said to them, All authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, every people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, which is the last verse I'm going to read, it says, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance, and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. This is God's promise. This is Christ's promise for us. And that is why you and I, we must stay committed to that, to this great commission. And as we do that, the Lord himself will bless us in Jesus' name. And perhaps as this was at this time, you have heard about the suffering of Lord Jesus Christ for you and I to be saved. But then you are yet to you know, embrace this salvation because you are yet to accept Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior. We want, we want you to know that this is the best time for you to do this because tomorrow might just be too late. And that is why we want to invite you at this time to just say this word of prayer so that you also can be a beneficiary of all that Jesus has to present to us on the cross and that's talking about the salvation gift if you want to accept the lord jesus as a lord and personal savior can you please repeat this prayer after me just lord jesus thank you for all that you did on the cross thank you for choosing to die for my sins i know that i'm a sinner please forgive me wash me with your blood today i accept you as my lord and personal savior wash me with your blood and give me that grace to live out all life from today i choose to do your bidding Please give me the grace to do that. And on the last day, help me to be able to read with you. Write my name in the book of life and feel, let your Holy Spirit fill my heart from now. Thank you because I've answered for Jesus' name. I have prayed. Amen. So if you have said that prayer with us, I want to congratulate you for making the best decision anybody can ever make. I want to assure you that Jesus loves you and of course he has accepted you into the fold. And we just want to encourage you that also, you know, just like we all go to school to learn more. And so we want to encourage you to please join a very village church around you. Let the man of God in the church know that you are a new convert, so that they can help you to be able to go in this line of faith. I also, also want to encourage you to please get a Bible so that you can study it. And from the Bible, you'll be able to know God's plan for your life. And of course, you'll also be able to learn one or two things and that will benefit you even as you work in this new part of it. And finally, I also want you to be a man or woman of prayer because just like you have also said in the platform, prayer itself is a way of us communicating with our Heavenly Father. So please embrace the place of prayer. It is important uh, for your spiritual growth. And please do not hesitate to, um, to ask us uh, for a Bible. If you don't have one, you can send us um, an email or you can give us a phone call and by the grace of God, we'll be able to provide you 
with the Bible. It's our prayer that the good Lord Himself will strengthen us all and keep us all to that perfect day in Jesus' name. Amen. So finally, as we close today, our prayer point um, is um, that we're going to pray say, Our Heavenly Father, please give us the grace to live a spirit controlled life like our Lord Jesus Christ and, of course, to preach the good news to others. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this releasing your son Jesus Christ to come and die for us. Thank you for all that Jesus did proud to the cross and even on the cross. Today we accept him as our Lord and personal Savior. We pray in the name of Jesus that you give us, oh God, Father, that you give us the grace to be able to live a spirit controlled life in the mighty name of Jesus. Just like our Lord Jesus Christ did, how he was able to, you know, make use of the fruit of the Spirit. Father, to be able to endure to the end, we pray, oh God, help us to, you know, to, to, to give us the grace to be able to live a spirit controlled life in Jesus' name. And we also pray, just like our Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus' name, we also pray that you give us the grace to be able to preach the good news, to be able to fulfill the Great Commission as you desire in Jesus' name. Thank you because you have answered for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And so we bless God for giving us the grace uh, to have a concluding part of uh, the message on understanding the possible love of God. And like I said, we have had the part one, part two, and today we are the conclusive part. This is our prayer that good Lord Himself give us the grace to always understand this love of His towards us in Jesus' name. And so as we uh, close this evening, we want you to please and uh, take your time. If you are not subscribed to our channel, please take your time to subscribe to our channel. Uh, so that you get updated each time we um uh, put on which time we have a uh, new content for us new messages so that you can be updated on whatever we have new messages uh, so that you all, we all can and uh, be blessed at the same time i also want you to know that it's important for us and uh, to preach the gospel and uh, that is the essence of this platform remember we are called sex ambassadors and uh, so our goal is to raise global commissioners around him the second coming of our lord jesus christ so please Remember, always remember this, that even as we go into the new week, this new week, it's better for you and I to preach the gospel. And of course, you can do this, do this by, you know, one-on-one -on -one, um, preaching um, of the gospel. You can share trust. You can uh, just just trust God for wisdom. All, the goal, all, all that we just want to achieve is for us to know that, is for us to be able to let others know about the Lord Jesus, our own salvation experience, and what Jesus Christ has come to the, uh, to the world to do. Our prayer is that the Lord Himself will keep us on on to the perfect day in Jesus' name. And so today, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. I want to wish us all a very wonderful week. God bless you. Bye bye.